नि देहृता शक्य कर्माण्यशेषत यस्तु कर्म फल त्यागी सत्यागीतमिष्टिश्रिविधम कर्मण फल हरि ओम एवरीबॉडी गुड मॉर्निंग today is a very auspicious occasion of uh, guru purnima celebrated as vyasa purnima so we will chant guru paduka stotram अनंत संसार समुद्रतार नौकायिताभ्या गुरभक्तिदाभ्या वैराग्य साम्राज्यदूजनाभ्या नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्या कविवराशिनिशाकुर्भाग्यदुधमालिकाभ्या दूरीकृतानम्रतिभ्यामो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्या नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्या श्रीपति समीयु कदाचिद्याशु दरिद्रवर्या मूकाचस्पतिताभ्या नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्या नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्यामौले व्रजरत्न का सरिद्विराज झशकन्यकाभ्यापत्वदाभ्यापंक्ते नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्या नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्यापंधकारापरंपराभ्यापत्रयाहींद्रकेशाभ्याशोषवाडवाभ्या नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्या नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्या 
प्रदवैभवाभ्यादान व्रतदीक्षिताभ्यामाधवांग्रे स्थिभक्तिदाभ्या नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्या नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्यामचापराखिलेष्टदाभ्यासहायाक्षदुरंधराभ्या स्वाताक्षदूजनाभ्याम नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्याम नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्याम कामादिसर्पजगारुडाभ्या विवेकवैराग्य निधि प्रदाभ्याम बोध प्रदाभ्याम द्रुत मोक्षदाभ्याम नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्याम नमो नम श्री सहना सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर्यंकवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मद्विषा वह ओं शाति 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 शुक्लांबरदर विष्णु शशिवर्ण चतुर्भुज प्रसन्न वदनम ध्यायेत सर्व विघ्नोपात वागीशाद्या सुमन सह सर्वाताक्रमे यम न्वा कृतकृत्या स्यु तम नमा गजानन वक्रतुंड महाकाय कोटिसूर्य सभ निर्विघ्न कुर मे देशु सर्वदा सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यं वरदे कामिणे विद्यारंभम क्या सिद्धिर्भव मे सदा गुरुर्ब्रह्म गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर ये व्यास वशिष्ठ नक्ता शक्ते पौत्रमकमशं पराशरात्मज वंदे शुकता तपो निधि व्यासा विष्णु व्यास विष्णवे नमो वै ब्रह्म निदे 
वासीय नमो नम वसुदेवसुत देव कंसचाणुरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंदगोपकुमाराय गोविंदय नमो नम सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ब्रह्मानंद परम सुखद केवल ज्ञानमूर्ति द्वंद्वातीत गगन सदृश तत्वस्यादिलक्ष्यम एक विमलमचल सर्वदी साक्षिभूत भावातीत त्रिगुणरहित सद्गु तम नमा सद्गु तम नमा Let us do the first and the last of the Gita Dhyana Shloka. Om Parthaya Pratibodhitam Bhagavata Narayane Na Swayam Vyase Na Gratitam Purana Muni Na Madhye Mahabharatam Advaitam Ruta Varshinim Bhagavatim Ashtadashadhyayinim अंबत्वागवद्गीते भवद्वेशिनी यं ब्रह्मा वरुणेन्द्र रुद्र मरुत स्तुन्वि दिव्य स्तव वेद सांग पदक्रमोपनिषद गायती यं साम ध्यानावस्थि तदगतेन मनस पश्यम योगिन यदुसुरासुरगण देवाय तस्म नम देवाय तस्म नम सर्वधर्मा पिताज मेक शरण व्रज अहम तापेभ्य मोक्षयिष्या देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर यधिमात्रेण सर्वे शिष्या सेवका कर्म क्षेत्रे प्रवर्तन्ते चिन्मय तम नमाम्यहम चिन्मय तम नमाम्यहम विश यू ऑल ए वेरी हैप्पी गुरु पूर्णिमा गुरु पूर्णिमा इज सेलिब्रेटेड एज व्यास पूर्णिमा ऑन दिस आस्पिशियस ओकेजन वी आर doing the essence of bhagavad gita today is the concluding session and vyasa muni is uh, is the one who codified all the vedas into four of them and who wrote the mahabharata in a aitihasik format which i had explained that bhagavad gita is in the middle of that in the bhishma parva our gita gnana yagna has been on the essence of bhagavad gita it started on mother's day and the concluding session today on guru purnima day we didn't plan it that way it just happened so today we will start with the first three questions that were there from the last session the first question was what are the types of karmas and i will try to address them during today's session a little bit and for more details on karma siddhanta you can always choose to call me offline or you can attend our vedanta sessions that happens on a weekly basis the second question was how to reduce 
anger against people who ill treat us. You know, sometimes we get stuck with people in life who does not share the same values as we are. So first strategy would be to rationalize with that person that you're dealing with and try to sort it out. That would be the ideal scenario. If that does not work, avoidance of that person helps a great deal with the mind to deal with our minds better. You know, out of sight is out of mind. But sometimes that may not be feasible because that person may be our boss at work or that may be our own family member who behaves that way. So the third strategy would be what you cannot cure, you have to endure. We call this in Vedanta as titiksha. Now, the third question was, how to create or solidify faith? You know, there are five types of faiths needed to be a better seeker. First is faith, Shraddha, or in our Vedanta, our scriptures. There are three means to do that, that our Shastras say. One is Pratyaksha Pramana, knowledge obtained through our senses. The second one is called as Anumana Pramana, or drawing a logical inference. Kind of like, I know it rained last night because the roads are wet today morning. I can draw that inference. The third one is Shabda Pramana. Vedas come under this category. Knowledge gained through teacher, knowledge gained through parents, reading books, etc., all fall, fall under this category. Then you have faith in God or truth, faith in the guru, Faith in yourself, faith in oneself, and faith in the means that we are pursuing. These are the five faiths. But I think your question is more related to how do I develop faith in God? There are three ways to develop faith with the Lord. Kaya, Vacha, Manasa. Puja is a great way to develop a personal relationship with the Lord. You are Ishta Devata. You can do daily puja on the form of the Lord. Then you do Japa on the name of the Lord. With Manasika, Chintanam on the nature of the Lord. This way, what happens is your mind begins to think slowly, nothing but the Lord. This is a sure way to develop Shraddha. Once that happens, it is the job of the Lord to find a guru in our lives to get the higher knowledge. You don't have to search for the guru, they say. He or she will find you. Bhagavad Gita says, Shraddhavan labhate jnanam. Hope that helps you. Let us start to recap where we had left off in the last lecture. We saw 16th and 17th chapters. In the 16th chapter, Daivasura Sampad Vibhaga Yoga, elaborating on the seed sown in the ninth chapter, Bhagavan gave us divine virtues that liberate us as we develop them and asuric tendencies that bind us. Bhagavan Krishna gave us a technique to avoid the gateway to hell 
in the 16th chapter, which were desire, anger, and greed. By leading a life in accordance to the guidance provided by the scriptures. In the 17th chapter, called as Shraddhatraya Vibhaga Yoga, we learned that faith reflects everything we do, what we eat, whom we worship, with what attitude we worship, how we perform our charity. Bhagwan Krishna urges us in this chapter to do everything with sattvic faith, with the remembrance and blessings of the Lord for total success and fulfillment. While the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita is like an index to all of Bhagavad Gita, 18th chapter today is the grand finale. It is called Moksha Sanyasa Yoga. This is the last of our Gita Gnana Yagna. So we will hit some highlights from this chapter 18 today. It is also the last and the longest chapter. It summarizes the entire teaching, emphasizing the practical aspects and application of the knowledge that has been taught. You know, any good teacher is one who tells you what he is going to teach. Like I told you last week, he tells you what he told you, and then again tells you what he told you. That is why Krish, Bhagavan Krishna is the teacher of teachers. Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum. He is the teacher of the whole world. We saw a little preview of the 18th chapter last week. In the first two shlokas, Arjuna is expressing a desire to know the difference between sannyasa and tyaga. A cursory look when we give, they both, both look similar to giving up something. So Arjuna starts, Arjuna Vuvacha Sanyasasya Mahabaho Tattvamichami Veditum Tyagasya Charushi Kesha Prutakeshi Nishudana 18-1 for that, Bhagavan responds. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Kamyanam Karmanam Nyasam Sanyasam Kavayo Viduhu Sarva Karma Palatyagam Prahustyagam Vichakshanaha Bhagavan starts off with what others' opinions are. The sages understand, he says, sannyasa as renunciation of desire-prompted action. Tyaga as abandonment of fruits of actions. You know, in life, a unique privilege is given to man. We have a choice to do or not to do, to get or to give to give in to temptations or to give up. So Tyaga is renouncing the fruits of action, while Sannyasa is renouncing the doership itself. Tyaga is like a prerequisite to Sannyasa. Tyaga to Sannyasa to Moksha. Although, our society typically respects the one with name, fame, wealth, power. But in Hindu culture, we revere those who have renounced everything. Even in the Puranic stories, we have seen great kings. They gave up all their wealth and walked into the forest and started meditating. 
you know our guruji's famous joke not a joke but a very serious comment you know it is a great honor for a grihastha when we say he is like a sanyasi in white clothes but the other way is very damaging if we say that to a sanyasi that he is a great samsari in orange clothes that can be very damaging he says so the true renunciation is internal we need to think are we happy giving up possessions or are we happy giving up possessiveness in chinmay mission we say in our pledge producing more than you consume and giving more than you take so bhagwan krishna here starts to give what others have opinionated like some have said karmas are defective and how it has a binding effect on people one action leads to the other and hence must be given up they say since it is not possible to give up actions some have said we have to give up the binding aspect of the actions so now in 18-5 shri krishna is asserting that duties should not be given up which ones especially worship yagna charity dana and austerity tapa yagna dana tapa yagna dana tapa karma natyajyam karyam eva tat yagno danam tapas chaiva pavana ni manishinam in vedanta we say there are three aspects to life adi daivika the unseen divine aspect that guides us that governs the individual life and the entire universe like weather for example we have very little control over it then is adi bautika situations beings things around us that are variables we have little control then comes adhyatmika our body our mind intellect which we have control total control actually the performance of worship yagna giving charity dana and austerity tapa covers all these three aspects of life the scriptures are recommending here to invoke the divine powers and grace through yagna to express gratitude you do dana charity and exercise self control through tapas or austerity you know it is easier to acquire than to give up giving up requires a lot of inner strength it is subtler there is difficulty giving up our time some find it very difficult to give up their positions and gracefully exit the one who gives up time and effort for a nobler cause it is satvik tyaga to give up something for publicity name fame it is rajasik tyaga giving up something impulsively swayed by emotions or just imitating others is tamasik tyaga so in this chapter one thing we will notice everything is divided into three categories so the main purpose of satvik tyaga is through yagna dana tapa what it does 
all gives us chitta shuddhi purification of our mind if it causes agitation don't do it the subtler will be to give up the notion of doership kartrutva and enjoyership bhoktrutva that is the one that prepares our mind for gnana so the sequence is from tyaga to sanyasa to moksha gnanam gneyam parignata trividha karma chodana in 18-18 he says the doer of action becomes the enjoyer of action it prompts him to do the action again and again this was one of the questions from the audience last week about that karma how these are prompted by the desires so i'm going to expand on that a little bit the knowledge of the object of pleasure is gnanam the object itself in sanskrit it is called gneyam and memory of the past enjoyment is parignata for example i had mango ice cream in my freezer a very simple mundane example but it'll enough to drive the point so i had great mango ice cream in my freezer i enjoyed it yesterday and i know it is a hot 90 degree day today that creates a desire to enjoy a little more today that was a very simple example of food but it is much more than that what it does is we have impurities in our mind called vasanas our inherent tendencies vasanas manifest as our raga likes and dislikes dvesha all actions inactions are driven by our likes and dislikes raga and dvesha what it does because of our vasana we perceive things and respond to things because of that we get a result and because of result it creates more vasanas so this is like the sorry go around not the merry go around the sorry go around that keeps going into that samsara chakra purity of mind chitta shuddhi and single pointedness chitta ekagrata are obtained through selfless action nishkama karma given to us by bhagavad gita the word karma means action each individual reaps the fruits of his or her action performed in this life or in the past life there is no deed that is small or there is no deed that is great good or bad that can go without an effect if there is a cause there is an effect that doesn't make karma a fate driven theory once we understand how our vasanas drive our actions we may hastily conclude that we are the helpless victims of our past vasanas that's not true if you want to know more about karma siddhanta you have to start attending our weekly sessions on vedanta where we will discuss all these topics although we have come to this world to enjoy or to suffer because of our past karmas called prarabdha we still have the freedom called purushartha self effort and there are four of them dharma artha kama and the highest goal is moksha so the karmas itself 
can be categorized under five broad categories. Kamya karma, desire prompted actions. I will explain each one of them. Nitya karma, daily duties. That includes both Vaidika karma and Vyavaharika karma. Meaning, Vaidik rituals and also transactional responsibility. Kartavya karma, duties that are enjoined by others. Samskara karma, rituals performed for purification. And Nishiddha karma, which is a no-no, prohibited action. So the Kamya Karma, actions are performed to attain a particular result, to fulfill a particular desire. For example, Jyotishtoma Yaga, to attain heaven. Putra Kameshti Yaga, performed con to conceive children. We are familiar with that from Ramayana. Nitya Karma. These are obligatory duties depending on the stage of life one is in, based on Varnashrama Dharma. For example, Gayatri Japa is a daily duty for a brahmachari. These are duties meant to bring discipline into, your li into our lives and discipline the mind. Then you have Kartavya Karma. These are actions prescribed by others, such as our parents. They tell us what to do, what not to do. Teachers, the government, place of our employment, all these are obligatory duties that we need to perform. Samskara karma. These are karmas performed as purificatory acts like the birth of a child, namakaranam, graduation, upanayanam, marriage ceremony, all this. Why do we do these rituals? To create an impression on the mind called samskara vidhi that gives us a sense of new beginning to fulfill. And prayasthita karma also falls under this category. And finally, the nishiddha karma, like stealing, prostitution, all these are a prohibited action that must be avoided. Now, there are three ways to do the karma based on our three instruments, kaya through the body, vacha through the speech, and manasa. Mind. That's why when we say Kaye Navacha Manasendri Yerva, we are praying to Lord to forgive us when we have done these type of behavior. So for an action to succeed, what I gave was a brief overview of that karma question that one had. So that is why I brought this in to the lecture. So for an action to succeed, we need jnana or drushti, a vision. Even in companies, we have a vision statement to begin with. Then you have to have an attitude of the doer, karta. Then you need an undertaking, karma. The fourth factor is buddhi, intellect. Then you need dhriti, fortitude. When all these five factors are there, success, peace, lasting happiness is are guaranteed. That's what Bhagavan says in the 18th chapter. So the vision of life, as our vision, so is our world. Yatha drishti, tata srishti. Have you noticed when we like somebody, we see only the good in them. And when we don't like somebody, no matter what that person does, we don't like them. We don't like what they do. In the 18th chapter, 20th shloka, he says, Avibhaktam vibhakteshu tadnanam viddhisatvikam. It is very important to have that big picture, that holistic vision in life. The right vision is to see that unity in diversity. This is called as Abheda Drishti. The one with Sattvic Drishti sees oneness in all. 
we need more people like that the kind of vision in the community work they unite all by focusing on the common good but for a rajasic person it is enough to be religious once in a way for him it is good to appear to be good than to be good rajasic vision person gives importance to only differences beda drushti he or she creates differences divisions conflicts such people are always petty quarrelsome they can maintain relationship always at the cost of another divide and rule is a classic example of this rajasic drushti these people are also ignorant alpa drushti they usually make mistake mistake part to be whole they don't have holistic vision they are fanatical with their blind belief illogical and cult like so we have seen the noble actions karma done with sattvic vision gnana and the right intention karta and understanding buddhi and fortitude dhruti that makes up for lasting joy sukha that brings greater success so the next uh, 20 shlokas in the 18th chapter 1820 to 1839 about 19 shlokas what i did i kind of created a tabulation under these three categories of what is sattvic what is rajasic what is tamasic under six headings of gnanam i'll take one example as to how to read this chart for knowledge i already explained in detail this sattvic person looks at it as an undivided self through all beings a rajasic person takes the self to be paroksha distinct from other beings and the tamasic person takes the body as the self and i've also given you the shloka number 20 21 22 like that from a karma standpoint a sattvic person does his duty without attachment and expectation a rajasic person does it with full of ego and for the sake of results tamasic person does random actions without considering the consequences from a doership standpoint sattvic person is detached enthusiastic unassuming calm whether it is success or failure the one who is attached greedy harmful subject to elation and depression is a rajasic karta tamasic person is undisciplined uncultured arrogant harmful and even a procrastinator shloka number 28 in the next chart the next three things in terms of the buddhi intellect he knows dharma and adharma the one with sattvic vision the one with tamas uh, rajasic is vague fluctuates lot of mood swings not the same at all time the tamasic person misunderstands the whole situation arrives at wrong conclusions anyway then you have fortitude dhruti sattvic dhruti person sustains the functions of all organs and focuses it towards the spiritual path the tam the rajasic person pursues dharma 
artha and kama for their benefits of it. If there is a benefit, he will do it. So instead of going through everything, I'll let you reflect on these. What it does is, in the beginning, the sukham for sattvic person seems like a poison. It is very disciplined effort, but at the end, it is like a nectar. For a rajasic person, it looks like nectar in the beginning, but poison at the end. The tamasic person is deluded anyway, right in the beginning and the end. So all he does is negligence. So this is how Bhagavan Krishna takes through the chapter of 18. He revisits the caste system, Varna Vyavastha. We have already seen this in the fourth chapter, that it is Guna Karma Vibhagashaha, not Janma Karma. I had already explained that aspect of the caste system. Bhagavan in this chapter elaborates that Brahmanas are devoted to self-control and austerities, pursuant of spiritual knowledge. Kshatriyas are valorous, efficient rulers during peacetime. Vaishyas take agriculture and trade, and Shudras serve others in the community. All of them take up their karmas, Bhagavan says, based on their swabhava, or inborn nature. That leads us to the famous quote of Bhagavad Gita, Svakarmana Tamarbhyarcha, Siddhim Vindlati Manavaha. You know, this is an often quoted shloka. We say often Bhagavad Gita has three paths. The path of karma, karma yoga, or the path of bhakti, bhakti yoga, and the path of jnana, called jnana yoga. All three paths, if you realize, are ego reduction exercises. If you empty your heart, like they say in the Bible, empty thyself, I shall fill thee. If you let yoga unite through the channels of your heart, it is bhakti. If you let through karma lose your identity and do the best through your organs of perception and organs of action, it is karma yoga. And when you get the knowledge through your purified mind and intellect, the understanding that ego is not your amigo, you have to let it go, that becomes your jnana. That self-knowledge attained by knowing that I am the actionless self. The one that gives up the notion of doership. The actionless is true sannyasa, says Bhagavan. Naishkar siddhim paramam sannyase nadi gachati 18-49. And then Bhagavan tells tells us where he is residing. He is seated right in the hearts of all beings. He says, Ishwaraha Sarva Bhutanam Hruddeshe Arjuna Tishtati. 18-61. Then comes the important aspect of Sharanagati. Total surrender. Tameva sharanam gacha. 
take refuge in god only by god's grace we attain that supreme abode of eternal peace tat prasadat param shantim sthanam prapsyasi shashvatam in 18-62 having said this bhagavan krishna now declares to arjuna i have given you all the teaching reflect on it and do as you wish yatechasi tata kuru in 18-63 that now comes the final teaching of bhagavan in 18-66 we have been chanting pretty much in every day in bhagavad gita sarva dharman parityajya mam ekam sharanam vraja aham tva sarva papebhya moksha yishami ma shucha bhagwan says renounce all your dharma take refuge in me me alone what he is urging here is become totally devoted to him by renouncing the papa by renouncing the punya giving up our extrovert tendencies ma shuchah no need to grieve so again surrender in gnana is that self knowledge that liberates from punya and papa merits and demerits that love for god through bhakti that service to god through karma karma yoga the main message of gita is to know to love and to serve i had told you there is a happy ending to the story when bhagavan krishna asked him did you listen to my advice like our puja guru ji says did you listen tentatively or attentively arjuna does the final act of surrender arjuna vuvacha nashto moha smrutir labda tat prasadatma yachuta sthito smigata sandeha karishye vachanam tava in 18-73 he says i shall do as you say karishye vachanam tava thy will shall be done now sanjaya somebody asked me who is sanjaya so i mentioned that he is our special embedded correspondent he is the charioteer of dhritarashtra who is giving a running commentary to dhritarashtra he makes a final comment yatra yogeshwara krishna yatra partho danurdara tatra shrir vijayo bhuti dhruvani tirma tirma 18-78 where there is lord of yoga shri krishna wherever there is the bow wielding arjuna there will be lasting prosperity dhruva shrihi total victory dhruva vijayah and abiding loss dhruva nitihi ever shining glory dhruva bhutihi eternal good when there is that spiritual vision and a man of action to carry that out there is lasting prosperity says bhagavan which is the concluding shloka of bhagavad gita but it is customary to read the first shloka of bhagavad gita because there is no end to our reflection on bhagavad gita symbolizing that dhrutarashtra uvacha dharma kshetre kurukshetre samaveta yuyutsavah ಧರ್ಮ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಇಸ್ ಮಮ 
the bhagavad gita speaks about mama dharma my duty for every individual and others it talks about kshetre kshetre dharmam kuru follow dharma be good do good everywhere and always that is the message of bhagavad gita so in bhagavad gita bhagavan he is the lord of the universe sakala koti brahmanda nayaka what he does he provides arjuna the right vision how to change his attitude in life most importantly how to think so that he could see the situation clearly without tension without reaction without the fear of failure and he could take the right action so in mahabharata the sto in that story he fought the battle of life and won it so bhagavad gita is a story from confusion to illumination from ignorance to knowledge from a state of dejection to the right vision and action what you become depends on you and not the situation and the final message of bhagavad gita is action without vision creates division vision without action remains imagination only when the vision and the action come together then there is transformation so the key take away from today is the last chapter of bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavad gita started with the difference of tyaga and renunciation tyaga and sanyasa bhagavan krishna explained how all the duties need to be done with the right sattvic attitude when the actions are dedicated to the lord ishwar arpita buddhi it brings chitta shuddhi purity of mind meditation with that pure mind culminates in the renunciation of doership sanyasa which turns in turn leads to moksha this indeed is the grand finale for the glory glorious bhagavad gita if mahabharata is the encyclopedia of hindu culture and religion bhagavad gita is claimed to be as its essence in the hindu tradition we compare mahabharata as the lamp and gita as the light in it gnana deepena bharata on this aspect on this occasion of guru purnima i would like to just say a few words from my heart on the chinmaya mission and our pujya gurudev chinmaya mission has touched millions of people worldwide through this type of gita gnana yagnas since it is guru purnima it is important to remember our pujya gurudev when he started this single handedly an effort of cultural renaissance in the 1950s in india he just had four people for his beginning gita gnana yagna the orthodox had even objected to him being teaching the upanishads in english and to teaching women and all that but he was a visionary because of his tapascharya today there are more than 300 centers worldwide and propagating this kind of knowledge to the masses millions of people have benefited from his work directly or indirectly this opportunity gave me a chance to study and reflect 
and extract the essence of all the 18 chapters in one time. Thanks to my good friends who made that sankalpa. Thanks to our Puja Gurudev's blessings and all the well-wishers who have supported me throughout this Gnana Yagna. I have personally received hundreds of emails and phone calls after each lecture with words of encouragement, questions, clarifications. First of all, I would like to thank on this auspicious occasion, my Puja Guruji Swami Tejo Mayananji, our global head of Chinmaya Mission Swami Swarupanandji, and many, many senior Swamis who personally wrote to me and for their word of encouragement. I thank them from the bottom of my heart. I am grateful and thankful to all the people who have worked tirelessly behind the scenes. Thanks to Shekhar, Srinivas, Krishna, Nagarjun, Narenji, Prasadji, Venkatji for all their effort week after week. I have to thank my wife, Veena Ji, for her unconditional support. I thank the temple management trustees for their support in making this happen, especially considering the unprecedented time of the coronavirus pandemic that we are in. I am humbled and grateful to all of you for the overwhelming response. I hope and pray that I did justice to your love and affection. With, uh, with that, I hand off to Venkatji from the temple to do the vote of thanks. After that, let us conclude with Mangalam. Om Tat Sat. Off to you, Venkatji. Namaskaram, Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha. I am uh, Venkat Gotur from uh, Sri Venkateswara Temple, Novai. Um, I'm part of the Board of Trustees. First, uh, I would like to thank you all for uh, the overwhelming response and actively participating in this uh, Jnana Yajna led by Sri Venkatesh Holabi. As we come to the last session of um, uh, Essence of Bhagavad Gita lecture series, on behalf of uh, uh, Sri Venkateswara Temple, Novai, I would like to thank Venkatesh Ji from the bottom of my heart for sharing his immense knowledge of the scriptures with us and explaining and summarizing the essence of Bhagavad Gita um, in such simple terms that even ordinary you know, people like me are able to understand how um, you know, Bhagavad Gita is like a guide uh, for us in leading our day-to-day -day life. Uh, for example, last week, uh, Venkateji um, explained to us how Bhagavad Gita goes to the level of explaining to us you know, what kind of food that we should eat and what kind of impact it has on our behavior. Uh, thank you so much, Venkateji, for um, guiding us and helping us especially in these uh, testing times. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, Sri Srinivas Shastri, who has been instrumental in arranging the lecture series and also for his continued efforts in ensuring that the lectures go on without any hiccups. I would like to thank uh, Sri Krishna Reddy for coordinating the Zoom sessions and ensuring the session uh, go on smoothly. Uh, special thanks to Veena, Srimati Veena Venkatesji for supporting us. Uh, last but not least, uh, big thanks to Sri Shekhar Arasala and uh, Nagarjuna Mova for their uh, continued efforts in conducting these sessions smoothly. Uh, today is the last day of uh, Bhagavad Gita, as you all uh, understood by now. Uh, but this is not the last time that we are, will be doing such a uh, series on uh, Vedanta. Uh, SP Temple, Novai is committed uh, in bringing to the community many such lectures based on our Hindu scriptures. Uh, please watch out for announcements from the temple for the upcoming Vedanta sessions. Thank you all once again. Uh, I would now uh, request uh, Sri Venkateshi to conclude the class. Thank you. Thank you, Venkatji. I appreciate it. Uh, we will do a small, uh, this thing since it is a small prayer as a conclusion. Om Mangalam, Om Kara Mangalam, Om Mangalam, Om Kara Mangalam, Om 
மங்களம் ஓம் காரமங்களம் ஓம் மங்களம் ஓம் காரமங்களம் குரு மங்களம் குருதேவ மங்களம் குரு மங்களம் குருதேவ மங்களம் குரு மங்களம் குரு பாத மங்களம் குரு மங்களம் குரு பாத மங்களம் குரு மங்களம் குரு சேவ மங்களம் குரு மங்களம் குரு சேவ மங்களம் சர்வ மங்களம் சர்வலோக மங்களம் சர்வ மங்களம் சர்வலோக மங்களம் ஓம் மங்களம் ஓம் காரமங்களம் ஓம் மங்களம் ஓம் காரமங்களம் ஓம் காரமங்களம் ஓம் காரமங்களம் ஓம் பூர்ணமத பூர்ணமிதம் பூர்ணாத் பூர்ணமுதச்சதே பூர்ணசிய பூர்ணமாதாய பூர்ணமேவாசிஷாந்தி ஹரி ஓம் ஸ்ரீ குருபியோ நம ஹரி ஓம் thank you and hari om everybody if you have any questions uh, you can always reach out to me via email or a phone call or anything uh, i will be happy to answer them